Welcome back to the now Jeff Antonio show. And always, it's a pleasure to have you here, Eliza XO. How are you? Hey, congratulations on the change. It was cool to see that your manager reached out. I was like, good for him. It's nice. I don't know. I always keep track of what you're doing, but it was nice to know that you had kind of like a manager to reach out. I thought that was really dope. Really, really awesome girl, Carrie. So, Thank uh, you. but I'm, how are you? <laughs> Fantastic. I'm fantastic. Yes. So I've been checking out your music and it's like, I haven't heard one bad song since I've last checked in on you. I mean, do you know how to write a bad song? Cause I've yet to hear one that's not good. First of all, yes, I of course do. And thank you. <laughs> um, but thank you. Yeah. That's kind of all I've been doing during quarantine just like the next artist and person, any person, sorry, excuse me, my light, things hanging off of it. But um, yeah, all I've been doing, just writing during quarantine. So I'm hoping that it'll be beneficial to the songs I release in the future. Hoping my writing has gotten better during this time, but we can hope well, for it. Well, it's, it's just like every single song I listen to. I was just listening to Savage and OMW and I want is so badass i love that song thank you so much i'm really proud of all of those so thank you i really really appreciate that you're welcome you're welcome which one is like the latest one that you've been working on or you've been releasing well okay my cat is gonna need to i'm i'm at home that's cool obviously <laughs> uh, taming my animals around here but yeah savage is my late, it was my latest release. I release, re-released kind of an old EP of mine back from when I was like 15 and 16, just to get it out. You know, there are people on the internet who have never heard these songs before. So even if my voice has matured since then, I still wanted to get it out. But Savage is like the most up-to-date release. And I'm releasing something on the 12th called Lunatic, which I am very excited for really excited for this one it's different way different vibe i think than any of my other songs wow wow yeah i like in the song how you're talking about that you're running with the wolves can you tell me more about the lyrics and, and what they mean yeah so during the george floyd death and all of that that was going on um it really affected me i mean big time i was in colorado at the time visiting family and I was unable to be in Los Angeles or in anywhere, you know, doing these big protests. I was in a very rural area and kind of got away from a really unsafe situation in California for a little bit. So I was kind of tucked away, not really in the middle of it all like I would have been usually. Um, so I started, <clears throat> hey, Juniper, that's a little disrespectful. Um, I just decided to write about it and tried to be a voice for other people without actually going out and protesting physically. And I just, I really grasped towards that and what happened. And I was a fucking mess for a few weeks and was talking to someone from a label for quite some time. And I, I told her, I was like, I feel like I can't do anything. I feel absolutely helpless. And this is what I'm here for is, you know, to be an artist and get a message out to those who listen or at least get inspired by it. So running with the wolves was kind of like, look, everything that's going on, no matter if you are black or white, a Trump supporter, a fucking idiot, a good person, a bad person, no matter what, like running with the wolves was in reference to running with the people who support you. Um, even if other groups may not support it, like run with your people and specifically for the Black Lives Matter protest, that's what I was getting at is I want you people to feel like you can run with me and 
be with me as I support you and I'm an ally for you. And so that's the message I was really trying to get out. Is that too loud for you? My cat's playing with her toy carrot. If that's no. really loud. No, I can um, hardly hear it. <laughs> but that's cool. Again, that's, that's, it's yeah, she's just she's just getting into the interview. She's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's cool. So running with the wolves was kind of an answer to George Floyd. Yeah, that that was really um, seems like a moment where time kind of stood still for for a minute, right? I mean, it was just unbearable to see what happened to him and, and just the, the lack of humanity and it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. It was really hard, really difficult for, for many, many, many people. And so that's the message I wanted to get out. And, you know, I know it's very controversial to a lot of my listeners and a lot of my supporters and fans as anything political is, but I don't give a fuck. I really don't. These people need a fuck. They need a voice, and I am willing to sacrifice all of my following and all of my fans for that. And you know, yeah, it was a trending song on TikTok, which is why I did it. I love Megan Thee Stallion. Her work is really badass. Only twenty five years old. I really, really like her. She's an Aquarius as well, so um, I love that. But her, you know, I wanted to turn it in to something different. And I mean this in the most respectful way possible, but I thought it would have been cool for a black woman to be singing that song already. Mm -hmm. Megan the Stallion already being a very fierce black woman in the industry and just in general. But I thought it would be cool, like as a little white bitch to take this song and create it into something else. That's also like backing her as well, you know, like support you. I support your music. I support your friends. I support your family, your other friends, everything. And so, you know, people like to say, dude, it isn't that deep. And I'm usually that person too, where not everything always has to be so fucking deep. And I think people need to have more fun with things, but that song as upbeat as it is, you know, it, it speaks volumes. And I, I tried to do it in a way that wasn't so down people's throats the message should be down people's throats, but I didn't have to make it such an angry song. I want this to live through generations and I want people to remember this, but I wanted it to be sort of like a push through thing. And that was at least my goal. So end of it with the analogy is like, run with the wolves, run with us, run with the people who support you. Right. We're here for you. That's what... It's what I try to do. So I'm proud of it. I'm excited that people at least grasp onto it more so than I, than I honestly even thought. So, well, sometimes, you know, and it's interesting how you did it because it's really in, 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 you know, it's like you said, it's not, you wouldn't necessarily know how deep the song is until you, you listen to the lyrics and you take meaning with it. But I think it's great that you, you took a stand and you're taking a stand. I mean, and sometimes it's like you said, it's like you don't want to lose any of your fan base. But I think yeah, you probably feel the same way after 2020. You know, I mean, it's you know what I mean? After 2020, sometimes you just got to put it on the line. And I'm glad you did it because I think more artists should speak up like you. You know, I mean, if you've got something to say, you know, it's it's you're not trying to tread on other people but at the same time it's like you, you see something like george floyd and it's like you no, but i have to i absolutely would have to and so for the people who are listening to this now or watching this now it's it more artists i do think need to be like that i'm not saying need to be like me but need to be vocal and you should be willing to sacrifice your fans and supporters and i'm sorry for anyone who gets offended by that but you are right 2020 has changed a lot of people's perspectives and at the beginning and even years ago I mean I will always go back and forth on my word I'm honest about that I'm aware of that I try to be as you know in my views as I possibly can be but I know that I've said things and done things in my past but 2020 all of what happened 
everything, even aside from George Floyd, people's political opinions, their just views on things, how they deal with things, how they communicate every step, every part of the pyramid really counts at this point. And years ago, I would say, I don't think it, people should have relationships just because of politics or something like that, but I sure as fuck do now. If you are not on my level and you don't view the same things as I do, then I'm sorry. I will respect you and I will listen to your opinion and I will not judge you. But when you are outright disrespectful and you're going out of your way to make a point, to shove your views down other people's throats in the most disrespectful way possible is when I'm just not okay with it. Yeah. So I will, I will tread on others if I have to, because I'm, I'm passionate. And sometimes that is to a fault and I'm aware of that. I try not to be so aggressive and how protective I am over people in situations that I can never change, but people need to speak up no matter what industry, no matter how much of a following you have, just fucking speak up yeah. your work. Oh, matters. And people really think it doesn't, but it absolutely does. What really is right does. is what is right. And that's just the way it is. And I'm glad that you do that because, you know, you got to have a voice out there for the unspoken. And, and it needs to be out there in the universe. So I'm appreciative that you did that, Eliza. Thank you. Thank you for listening and for taking the time to talk about it. I'm glad that you are one that can kind of see it in the same way as well. You know, it's, well, it, it is nice to have the like-minded people who can at least see it in like outside of the box, though I do respect and we'll never try to judge other people's opinions, but yeah. it's nice. Even our, like, you just, you understand shit on yeah. the same, I think. I mean, and I, yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's just one of those things that I think, you know, seeing something like that is just life-changing. And uh, yeah, you know, you, you sometimes you, you just got to say something. So tell me about, COVID, I mean, has that changed any of the ways that you, you know, you write music, you interact with other artists? I know that you've always been self-contained, and that's one of the things that you had my head spinning interview one. It was like, well, it's just me. And I'm like, yeah, but like, no, no, really, it's all me. And I was like, yeah, but he's like, no, really. It's so, I mean, is, did that, has it had any effect on you at all? Because you were always just like, it's just you, like, doing all of it which is amazing. Thank you. First of all, of course, I have had help with, with things as, as well, you know, not absolutely every single thing, you know, my, my artistic process. Yes, I do that all my fucking self, but there are people who do help me in other ways. I do want to mention. Um, yeah, it, it is, it stayed the same in a way and it is for sure changed. I would say the way that I trust other artists, the way that I trust other you know, like management teams and record labels, the way that I view them now is very different from COVID. And that's my own personal shit that maybe I'll get over, but I've had a lot of letdowns during COVID. I really have. And it's been really unfortunate, but this is the industry I chose and I'm not going to get anywhere if I sit and fucking cry about it. So I do what I can. And the Savage remix every single part of that was me and as proud of myself as I am it was really difficult it was really difficult to do and the, the pressure I it's kind of interesting because you work towards this your whole life and you want this to be you know your career path where like in my eyes to me it's not just about being famous or well known if I'm going to be well known I want it to be in music and I want to be proud of what I do but TikTok took off way fucking faster than I thought it was going to. I mean, I posted that cover of Savage less than 30 seconds and it, it took off really quickly and people were, you know, get this out, get this out, get this out. And my, me in my mind, I'm like, okay, let's do it. I've been waiting for this moment. Let's get the fucking remix out. I'll work on it, get started on it. Bam, let's do it. Right. That was my main goal. And then record labels started getting involved other people noticing you know how many views I was accumulating how many how much traffic my analytics everything you know it's a very tedious pro tedious process um as you know in this industry so 
I started getting re reached out to by these people. And so I kind of took a step back and was like, you know, I've been waiting for this for a very long time and working very hard. So I'll give these people a chance. I'll open my creative process up to the world and not just be a fucking hermit. Like I, you and I both know I can be, yeah. um, <laughs> but <clears throat> I took the risk and you know, I was promised a, a producer and a mixer and a mixing engineer and someone to do my cover art for me and all this stuff. And so I'm sitting back for the first time, like, fuck, yeah, you know, it's my time to just relax. I have my creative process still. I have a say in what I'm releasing and doing, but damn straight, get somebody up on my project. Let's get me a team. Finally, right. a team that I what everyone wants in this industry, no matter if you're an artist or a, an a and R, right? <sighs> So I took that risk and it set the remix back a lot. There's also a lot of legalities that go into it. Releasing a remix is not just like, hey, yeah, let me just poop, poop, pop, pop, pee, pee, poo, poo, and just release it. And it's all good and Gucci. It's really, like, I don't, I'm not trying to get sued. And I told very many people this and it just became a really scary process. So I had to kind of push the release back a lot. And then people on the internet were like, what the fuck, dude? You know, we know you're a flaky person. You do your own thing, but where is this song? It's been six months. And it just, it was really, really unfortunate. And so people were looking at me like, dude, if you've been working on this your whole life, then how is it? People demand one song and you can't even get it out. And for me, and I, I don't like being vulnerable with anyone. And we spoke about this, my first interview, I don't trust a lot of people. And so when just because people demand something from me does not mean I'm going to give it to you. So when people were asking, where the fuck is this song? We've been waiting for it. Right. Yo, it's coming out. It just takes a little bit. There's a lot going into it, but you know, behind the scenes, it's like, I was losing my goddamn mind you off. I mean, I was really, it's a vision and other people get involved thinking that they're making you know they're making you believe that they're going to help you and even if it's not their intention people don't usually go into it like yeah i'm going to fuck this person over i'm going to make it more difficult for them right it just yeah they want their say, right they want their saying it they want they want to be the one to be like yeah you know what i helped discover her and she was already awesome but then i gave her this great idea and that's the you know it's like everybody wants that part of the process but sometimes it's like they need to listen to the artist right so i have a thing that i know i am hoping i will get over um this industry is something i will always try to pursue even when i'm 45 and they tell me i'm too old to be doing it like i'm still gonna be doing it um i told these people basically like fuck off i'm doing this myself and it took a really big risk so then that set the release back even more of course i had to do all the cover art myself i had to which is a choice I made. So I'm not making it a woe is me. Like I decided this, but the process since last speaking to you has been really fucking difficult, but it still stayed the same. It's just, I'm more passionate and wanting to do things my own way. Mm -hmm. And I've always spoken, but I kind of do this little, I, I call it my Russian spy thing. Um, whatever that even means, just, it's like this double side of me that I feel like I have sometimes where, you know, like I'll play the part and okay, everything's fine. But really behind the scenes, I'm not trusting what's going on. I really just want to have a, a say in what my process is. Mm -hmm. um, I respect what you're saying. That doesn't mean I fucking believe it or want to work with you by any means. So that's kind of what was going on. It's like, you know, Eliza, you waited all this time for people to notice you and want to work with you and release your song and put it on a bigger platform but I didn't like how things were vibing and it took off like I said on TikTok way faster than I thought and so not only am I getting my process kind of disrupted by those who I felt were going to help me but I'm getting hundreds and hundreds of people reaching out to me where the fuck is this song and I have no team so I am hustling my ass the best of my ability trying to get this out and not look like a fool to people who are needing a song that's on the charts keep in mind you know like this wasn't just some little song that was from an independent artist these people were expecting me to recreate a remix just like that release it no legal process no anything just like that 
all pop charting song. And I took that, of course, as a challenge. I'm like, damn, fuck, I'll do it. Mm. But like, no down. But when I let people into my creative process, it seems that it is not beneficial. And I'm not saying that's every single time, but during COVID to answer your question, it is, I think my process, do I want to be signed? Do I want to continue being an independent artist? Do I want to work with people? So these are just questions I've asked myself. Those will always change how I feel about that um, based on personal experience and different artists you work with, all the bullshit. But specifically during COVID, my process has gotten more secluded and kind of more kept to myself, I'd say. And I hope that 2021, I can collaborate with anyone and everyone. Um, if you're willing to not disrupt my fucking process with all due respect. <laughs> and what is your process? What is that? Leave me alone, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, leave me alone. And I, and I, it's, people get really offended by that. Or I always get the, you know, you take forever to respond. Where are you? Did I do something to upset you? And I get it. I really do. I'm a complex person. I, I am a fucking hermit when I am working on a project and anyone knows that there's a party. If we're going to the club that night, someone's got a little shebang going on, whatever it is, we're going to go get wine somewhere at some dive bar. I don't know, go walk in a creepy alleyway with a joint, whatever it is, I'm down. But if I'm working, I'm working. If I say no. And so really that process is when I, I do need deadlines. So that's where I think a a good management team or something would, would come in handy is I am almost too free and I will procrastinate, but I will get it done. And I will be just as passionate. I will be just as focused on the project even if I'm doing it last minute, but it does help me to have someone be like, Hey, I will leave you the entire fuck alone and let you do your process, but you need it done by this date. I will not talk to you, bother you, but we need it done by this date. So I am Miley Cyrus's biggest fan. I probably have already told you that in the, in the last interview, but her process inspired me because of that. I don't know the ins and outs of her management team or her process, you know, she's, she likes to not tell her life story to the world as, as well, but I've noticed and have heard her say in her own interviews that she doesn't like to be disrupted. And I don't think very many artists do leave us the fuck alone. We will respond to you. We will get our projects out, but we're not on your dime. Yes. You got us here. Yes. The support, the fan base, all of that you play it's a 50 50 thing we are only here because of you and you only have my delicious music in your ears because of me correct i'm in my process i i I really do need to be left alone and so that's kind of where it got difficult during covid was i had yes i've been waiting for this whole this moment for people to want my music and be demanding it and all of that but right then and there was just not the fucking time unfortunately um, for me, just because I couldn't provide what people needed and it kills me. And it wasn't even wholeheartedly my fault. It was with all due respect, other people who really did try to help, but just didn't really, really know how to do that right at that moment for me. So I've become more secluded in my, in my process just for right now. Mm-hmm. Then once I'm back in California, which will be in just a few days or weeks, um, It'll be back to collaborating and hopefully gaining a team where it doesn't just have to be me. I love being alone and working on my process, but dude, even if it is just my own label and I'm the one releasing it, I want people to help me. And I hate fucking saying that. I hate saying that. Like makes me though that I even said that. I hate me. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that, Eliza. To want to have a team of people around you that share your vision. Yeah. All of us need that. And you wanting that is like, you know what I mean? It's crucial. It's, it's, it's so crucial. I mean, I can think of so many times in my life that I was going after something and 
to have someone else there or to have a team of people there, a crew of people, it can make a big difference. So I think that's like, it's just natural because yeah. the highs it's and not- the lows, you know? I feel like it's not for me though, dude. Like I push everybody away, which I vibe with. It's my choice. It just sucks because I get in the position where I'm like, fuck, I need a team. Like, how am I ever going to do this if I don't have people helping me? And then when people help me, I become this like diva ass bitch where I'm like, that's not right. That's not how I wanted it. That's <laughs> it's and, okay. I, and that's why it's frustrating is because I don't want to be looked at like, I'm not working with her because she's a fucking bitch because she knows her vision. You know, it's just the silver lining of like, I put my foot down, but when does it come to like doing it too much and pushing everybody away too much? And COVID has really made that confusing for me because I I become too trusting and I'll let people in to help. And then it fucks up my shit, just like the situation I told you. So it's always going to happen. This is the way life is, but yeah, COVID has been really weird really weird for my process and I just hope that 2021 can bring a team people that I trust and those who aren't there to jeopardize my journey you know it isn't just always about me and my voice and my production and my this and my that my posts and my TikTok like I want people to vibe too I'm really good at being alone but that doesn't mean I always want to be so it's about finding that balance. There's nothing weird about that. I think it's about relationships, just like everything else. It's just trying to get it right from the top and just saying, you know, I really want to work with you. It seems like we're vibing well, but just to let you know, like, these are my top five rules, which are number one, you know, like I'm an artist and I will connect with you, but I also need my, you know, just like, just letting letting them know where you're at and what you will and won't do. And I'm sure you've been there too. Like, you know, working with people in the studio where it's just like, sometimes you've got somebody that's very talented that you're working with, but they just want to go this way. And you're like, no, 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 I'm going that way. And it's just setting them from the top and saying, okay, if you want to go that way, that's not really like what I want to do. That's not my flavor. I respect you. It's not wrong with you for wanting to do that. But, um, you know what I mean? It's just like setting it right from the top. I just feel like people continuously in this industry get offended by that. When I don't get offended by that, and even if I do for a second or if I lash out and I'll freak out and be like, what the fuck? That is so unprofessional. You reached out to me for this, whatever it is. You know, I, I hold my ground. Like I said, maybe it's to a fault sometimes, but it's also the protective shell that I have too. when you're an independent artist and it is you all doing it. And you're a female in this industry. Not everything has to be a sexist topic, but like, let's be real, dude. It gets weird (laughs) sometimes. And I have to hold my ground, but it also seems that some people get offended by that. And it's like, well, what the fuck did you think? I, I'm not going to get on my knees to, get to where I would like to be. This is how I do things. This is my process. And it seems kind of to back up what I was saying a few minutes ago is like, it just hurts because I know that when I do that, I burn a lot of fucking bridges. And I think that's where it is, is it gets me frustrated because damn, do I want people on my side, but it's really hard for me to do that because I'm so protective over my craft and what I do that, you know, I, I, I don't know. Have you ever seen the movie Into the Wild? Do you know that story or the book or anything? I think I did see that a while ago. Yeah. Is that the one that came out recently? Or, or yeah, that- directed and I don't know, completely filmed by Sean Penn. Amazing story. The guy who it's about, his name is Chris McCandless. And I just really relate to him because he just is the same way or was the same way he passed uh, years ago. But just you want to trust people and you want to let everybody in and you want to have all of those people. But when it becomes too lonely, you're willing to fucking flee and quite literally go into the wild away from everything. And that's what I know how to do. And I need to get better at that because I do want people and no, it isn't weird. I know it isn't weird, but it's weird for me. 
it's weird for me because I'm always alone and I choose it. I don't let anybody in. Even when someone's like, Hey dude, just like, let me listen to that. No, not until it's done. That's right. Not until. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And you know, I mean, to me, one of my favorite artists of all time was Prince. Right. And he was going to do it his way and there was not going to be any other way. And if you didn't like it, you were not welcome in his purple majesty. And that's just the way it was. And some people, you know, I, I listen to interviews all the time about him and it's just the way it was. And it might've rubbed some people the wrong way. Um, but I think ultimately people respected him because he just kept it real. He was going to do what he wanted to do. Matter of fact, I was just watching a, um, you know, just a video popped up the other day and they're talking about the Super Bowl performance with him and how it was crazy. That's his time, you know, on one of the biggest stages <laughs> and he's doing cover songs for the <laughs> Super Bowl performance. And it's like, but you see, that's Prince. You know what I mean? It's just like, he's going to do what he wants to do when yeah. he wants to do it. And if you don't like it, like he, ne- he never cared. I don't think he ever, I think he wanted to be a, uh, I think he wanted people to love his music, but I also think he wanted people to enjoy whatever he's like, I'm doing this now. This is what I'm doing. Don't be worrying about Purple Rain. You know, this is what I'm doing right now. He wanted you to focus on his latest work. And so I would say the Mm -hmm. same thing for you. It's just you being honest and authentic. Um, I think people will respect you more, even if there's you know some people in the interim that don't get it it's fine because it's going to lead you to the people that will understand you but I also feel like you should have someone in your camp who's like your buffer who's like your who's like your you know not bodyguard but like quote-unquote bodyguard who's like the buffer between you and everybody else and they know the way that you flow and the way that you do stuff and they got to If someone wants to get to you, they got to get through them, and they know the process. That probably, I think, that would work out good for you. Yeah, that's a very good point, and I do really respect Prince, and always have as well. My sister has always been a really big fan, and the thing is, it's like I am so much like that, where I really am so okay with being weird. I love to shock people. Um, people probably aren't going to like that I say this and it's going to sound like a really fucking arrogant thing to say. And I don't care when I feel that I am too pretty. I don't like it. Weirds me out. I don't like it. I don't fucking like it. Nope. Nope. I need it. I need it to be weird. And I need it to at least, well, I don't, I don't want to say weird as in first of all, like that's a bad thing. And second that it's like a quirky, whatever. I, I know that I'm not some ridiculously, you know, most original person. I get my inspirations as well, but I am okay with shocking people. I'm okay with doing different things. That's different than the normal. It's, it's like, it does get lonely, you know, and no matter how jaded I am and how detached I am on the daily basis and how really as grounded as I can get, no, I don't fucking need you. Yes. I will always do this my way. And we both know that it's the fact of how lonely it really can get. And I think it's because I didn't know that until COVID still on the same topic and answering your question. I didn't really, I didn't know that I needed a team and I didn't know how lonely I felt in this industry until the last few months. And back what you said on the respect thing, I freaked out on this dude a few days ago. I sent him an email he had reached out to me for a release with a well-known artist. I'm not going to disclose any information about it. Mm-hmm. So, however, I got offered to be on this release with a very well-known artist that I've listened to for a while. It didn't work out. He basically ghosted me with all due re- respect. And so that was kind of the cherry on top for things amongst everything that had been going on with the Savage release. And I got pissed off. And I was like, I don't know who you think you are handling business like this. You reached out to me really fucked up and all of that. And then I, you know, it took me a few weeks and I kind of reflected a little bit. And it's like, dude, it is what it is. Like someone else is on the release. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? It's a black man, even better. Even I am so okay with that. Even if it would have been, it doesn't matter, you know, but it, if it would have been any other 
skin color or person, I still would have felt the same way, but it meant different after Savage Remix to not be put on this release. Right. It was like, could I be upset with not getting on a release, even though I was told I was on it? Yes, that was unprofessional. After releasing Savage Remix and saying, we need to support Black people, we need to support the Black community. And then a little bitch gets something taken away from her while a Black man gets it and I'm sitting here pouting about it. <clears throat> I had a little reflection moment and I emailed that guy, I think two days ago. And I said, I lashed out on you as fuck. And I want you to know that <clears throat> I hold no hard feelings. I was really disrespectful. I was bummed out that, you know, business wasn't handled the way that it should have been, but I really appreciate you reaching out in the first place. And it kind of took a step back where even the times that I do burn bridges or the times that I push these people away who do want to work with me or how ever the situation goes, that at the end of the day, yeah, I, I do know that when people put their foot down, it is respected. And then he responded and was like, thank you for following up and told me that it was, you know, he, he appreciated that I followed up. And I realized within that moment, just like what you said, that me standing up for myself and saying how it was and being as honest as I possibly could have been ended up being more beneficial in the long run, even though something didn't work out in my favor. It was like, this is just the way that the industry is and it does get lonely and I can get upset about it as I just was a few minutes ago, but I wouldn't choose anything else. And this is why I keep doing it. And Prince did the same thing. Miley does the same, you know, Gaga does the same thing. Do you know who Oliver Tree is? Are you familiar with who that is? I don't think so. You should. It's good. You should listen to him. He's really, he's fucking weird. He's just so weird. Brilliant. <laughs> absolutely weirdo you know I love it so weird industry that we put ourselves in but COVID was was weird and had disadvantages in every way possible but it also had had its advantages as well and I think that I, I have learned a lot and I'm going into 2021 with a whole different fucking attitude for sure way what different the advantages attitude. would you say of COVID I the fact that I did get a lot of that exposure from Savage, you know, I, I have a lot of support. I have still been able to, you know, keep sort of that following. I wouldn't really say on Instagram, like I've, I've lost kind of a lot and that's okay. People free, they can leave whenever they fucking want. Um, but I've been able to, at least on TikTok, kind of keep that number up there. Um, my following up there, my supporters, my fans who really enjoy listening to my music and coming back for the, for the cover videos that I do post. Um, that has been a great advantage. I have been spending a lot of time with family. I've been in Washington State, Colorado, all around not being in the city. And it's been really nice. So it's, it's kind of like I had my shitty end of the stick at the beginning had a reflection time and now it's to the end where it's like all right get back to LA you know get back home get these releases out get back to the projects that you dipped out on you know do all the things that I need to fucking do take care of that and it's it's been an advantage for sure it's been a balance and I think that's the same for everyone how's it been for you I mean has it been more negative or would you say it's been more of kind of a positive thing for you I think it, at first it was quasi negative. I mean, when it first happened, um, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of, you know, looking over my shoulder and you know, the mask and washing the hands and, and doing it, you know, and, and knowing that it's what you got to do. Um, but then there were times where it was just like, you know what? I've got to live and I'm not going to live in fear. And I'm just going to live my life as best I can. So it was kind of like an up and down, up and down. But I felt like the end of 2020, I was just like, the hell with it. You know what? I'm just going to hustle. I'm going to grind as I always have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hope I don't get it. I'm being responsible. I hope and I hope I don't give it to anybody else. If I do have it, which, you know, uh, as far as I know, I never did. But, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely weird. 
But I think when it first happened, I was definitely like, oh, man, no, man. Because, you know, like everybody else, it's like 2020, I've got plans. I'm going to do this, do this, do this. I'm going to travel, do this. And what? COVID? Like, we have got any time for that. But as it progressed, it was like, this is real. And, yeah, there was a kind of a freak out. Then it just like the hell with it. And, you know, you know, and, I, and I've known a few people that, that have died from it. And, um, and it's scary. It's definitely scary. It's scary how it affects people in different ways. You know, some people get it, hardly feel anything, don't feel anything at all. Some people get it and it's like death's door. It's just one of those crazy things. Um, but there's just a voice in the back of my head that just keeps saying, you know what, man, you just got to keep moving. You got to keep doing your thing and just, you know, trust that, you know, hopefully nobody gets hurt and, 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 and things get better, you know, with everything and maybe the vaccinations, I don't know, but I went from an extreme kind of fear that mm-hmm. really took over me the first couple of months to just, just got to do what you got to do, you know, and, uh, and live life and go out and do, you know, be responsible, but just do what you got to do. So. Yeah. What are, you, what are you doing to pass time? What have you been aside from your work and your podcast stuff and everything? Like, what are your, hobbies i think i asked you the last interview but i don't know if you've picked up any more or <laughs> well i cook i do love to cook um i love to ride my bike um on trails various trails in socal i love to walk there's so many awesome neighborhoods here and i tell people i mean you know but i tell people who've never been to california it's like yeah, we have trails and stuff, but like you could just go into a neighborhood here, a hilly yeah. neighborhood. It's just the a same. Hilly, a hilly neighborhood. I love the hilly neighborhoods. No, I'm saying you just go to any random neighborhood and go up, and it's just <laughs> as big and bad as a trail. Um, you know, and I'm talking steep, you know, and um, really great workout. So, yeah, I do a lot of walks um, to clear my head, especially if I feel like. I'm getting stuck and I just can't figure out what to do next, whatever I'm working on. It's like, okay, time to get up and walk. So I get up and I'll walk. And um, the same thing with that though, you know, it's just like going to walk outside in the beginning was like, okay, you know, it's just like, I don't want to get too close to any, you know, but then over time you just loosen up and you just realize that, you know what, hopefully you don't get sick or get ill or get someone else ill and, and then there's the walking with the mask on up these crazy hills and you're like, you're out of breath with the damn mask, but you got to do it. So it's a challenge. I just try to look at everything as an advantage. And I think about, well, you know what? Pre-COVID, I remember seeing people run with those masks to kind of limit their mm-hmm. oxygen to make them better. And that's just like, I guess you could look at it the same way. It's like, this going to make me stronger. But um yeah, I would definitely say walking, being outside, breaking it up, the monotony of being inside is the best thing that, you know, I've done and I recommend to anybody because especially today of modern technology, we can just be so glued to what we feel is natural light, like a laptop, cell phone, or whatever you're looking at. But it's no kidding. Not the same, you know? Yeah. Not Definitely. So you got to get out. You got to you got to see the air. You know, even if there's wildfires burning, you got to got to get out there and try not to breathe too much of that stuff. But just look at some nature because, um, you know, if you if you're inside too much, it just I think it can drive you crazy. Yeah, for sure. Fuck the wildfires for sure as well. And at least people are still able to get out and walk there. Thank God for the residential neighborhoods that are nice enough for when, because I believe, right, Santa Monica and Venice were closed for a little bit at least, or like you couldn't oh, yeah. really go. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's cool that, you know, people, because at the beginning for me, at the beginning of COVID, it was, it was pretty shut down, but it wasn't anything like that. And I had left to Colorado kind of when everything sort of shut down really, mm-hmm. but I was still able to longboard and go walk in the neighborhoods, like you said, and 
it's really yeah it's really really helped i recommend it go out and fucking take a walk go take a walk go out take a walk especially colorado beautiful would you say it's been good to to be in colorado away from la for a little bit absolutely yeah i was born there so it just kind of holds a way different feeling for me i have my dad's side of my family out there my sister and her family nieces and nephews so it was nice to hang out with little children that have no concept of anything that's going on anything that's going on besides you know my 10 year old niece she's way too smart for her own good so she definitely knows and my family has always been kind of very I don't know we have always taught the people in our family what racism is what homophobia is all of that and so she knew what was going on to an extent and to as much as her mind can understand not anything being withheld from her of course um but to what her mind can understand and like it was really nice to be there and have this 10 year old girl talk to me about how she feels about this situation, how she feels about COVID. Um, What is it like to be at home looking at your class and looking at your teacher after being in school, public school, you know, for us, it's different. Obviously we went to school, all that shit, but for her, she only went for a few years and then this happened. And so it was really cool to be outside in a completely quiet place no other influence around walking trails everywhere and just to be around kids who have such a different I don't know I love conversations I love talking I love knowing what's going on in people's minds even when I can't figure it out that's even better for me and so to hear these kids have no concept of what's really truly going on but to hear them vocalize their feelings on it Mm -hmm. was really cool for me really cool for me. I've been reading a lot of psychology books that my mom has had over the years. And it's just like, I'm teaching myself a lot. I want to know things. I want to know what's going on in the world. And being in Colorado, like I said, it wasn't just like being outside in nature with bears and elk and things. It's like, I was born here. My family's here to an extent. I'm just sitting in the middle of God knows where talking to my niece and nephew my people are here I'm safe from everything that's going on but still angry as fuck that I'm not in the middle of it because I can't do anything but it was really nice it was really I'm very 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 grateful and even being in Washington right now there's other issues from high school that like to present itself in the small town that I grew up in unfortunately Mm -hmm. but here specifically like in my childhood home it's been very very nice and I'm grateful that it I could have been a lot worse I can have my own problems during COVID I can bitch about whatever I'm my own main character so of course it's going to affect me but this experience could have been way worse I could have been I could have died from the virus. I could have had someone I know die from the virus. I'm yeah. sorry, by the way, for the people that you lost that Thank you knew. You. Thank you. Yeah. I'm grateful for all of it, even the bad parts. <clears throat> Excuse me. The George Floyd. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. I'm not grateful that a soul was lost and I'm pissed as fuck. But guess the history that it made from now on, people will, will never view this the same and so I am grateful for that I'm grateful for that moment to see us come together and do it in a way that we never have before and so I'm grateful for all of it Colorado was just one of those things placed in there you know I'm excited to get back it was right on time wasn't it really was yeah yeah Washington too I mean it's uh I've been to Washington probably three or four times, but the minute I get out of SeaTac, it's just like this is the greenest place I have ever seen. I mean, it's just one huge, beautiful garden. I mean, is it? Do you feel the same, or is it different because you grew up there? I mean, how do you see it? It depends on when I'm, what's going on in my life, how I feel, what my mood is, who is trying to exploit my information to God knows who all different factors. Um, 
at this time being here has, I've seen it very differently. I, when I'm driving to go to the coffee shops that I've been going to since I was in high school, I see the mountain behind it that I've never fucking noticed before. Yeah. Never fucking noticed that mountain. Never, never seen that. Never noticed that. And it breaks my heart because I was focused on other things. Of course, as everyone is growing up, going to high school, dealing, being in a relationship, <clears throat> finding out who your friends are, all of that. So I missed out on a lot of the beauty here. And so I'm just really grateful that I can come back occasionally from LA as a visit and see kind of what I have missed over the years, because I swear to God, as small of a place as this is, it's something new every time. Like that angle, never noticed it that way. Never noticed how beautiful that mountain looks. And so just unfortunate that in any situation in your life, that those injustices from normal situations can kind of just make you miss out. So yeah, of course I feel that way. This place is green as fuck and it's beautiful. I want everyone to come to Washington and Oregon at least one time. Um, but typically I see it, I see it very differently than I ever have, I think for sure. No, it's, it's just, it's gorgeous. And, and like you said, Oregon too, um, super green, super lush, mm -hmm. just beautiful. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. Really? Um, yeah. For anybody who hasn't been, I highly recommend it really. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen any other place like the Northwest, you know, that kind of landscape. Maybe Ireland. I don't know. I haven't been to Ireland, but it's lush. It's green. It's beautiful. It's, man, it's just gorgeous. Um, but you, you talk about like, like high school. How, how, what was that like for you? Was it, was it hard? Was it good? Was it? <laughs> it was an experience that is for sure there's many layers to that and maybe one day when I have a team that will prevent me from lawsuits I will fully explain this so that no one feels that they're being slandered or something okay. <laughs> it uh was a difficult time for a long time yeah it was, and what goes around comes back around. So I would like to say that first and foremost, that things that happened to me and things that were said to me are completely unexcusable for sure. Mm. Um, never been told the things that were, were said to me. <sighs> However, I know that at times I was disrespectful to people as well. And I may have not said those same things or did those same things. I never slandered anyone across the internet at 16 years old. I never told somebody they should kill themselves, that they shouldn't make it through their tumor surgery. I never told anybody that. So it is tough and of course still affects me to this day, no matter how strong I am. It's like that shit gets to you, you know? And it's just like, what the fuck, dude? People are weird. <laughs> People are weird. And is it, is it a small town thing? Is, 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 is that what that is? Yeah. It's, a lot of that is just, it's the way that it is. I just think high school is a difficult time for anyone. And me getting emotional right now about it is like, that's a hard time for everyone. <sighs> high school fucking sucks. And even at the best times, someone is always going through it. And so I guess I'm just kind of reflecting on a lot of things. And there's a lot of people I've lost that I wasn't really close to per se, but living in a small town, even living in Los Angeles for the last three years, I still care about my town, even though so many people fucking hate me and always will. It's like, dude, when you go to school, with barely any people and there's people who die in your school, mm. you read that and it's just really, to know that you grew up with these people that it kind of seemed like a family at one point because that's all you knew and things just change in the blink of an eye. And I know that females do take things very differently as you know males do and I do get that. But at that time, like if, if these things happen to me now, I mean, that has all trained me for the disrespectful things. Someone says something on the internet about me now. I'm right. like, dude, 
you're miss like you're missing five more things that you could add to that list of your insults but i'll let you spin out for a second but back in the day dude that shit it really threw, hurt. threw me i genuinely never saw it coming and i know that that's a part of the reason why those people did it amongst many reasons that i i hope i get to know someday i hope i get to figure that out um as to why certain things did happen in high school between me and certain people, but I'm just grateful that people know how to grow up and get past it. I'm still learning things that I've said to people. I'm sure they're still dealing with and trying to get past. So I think the topic high school in general is just a really touchy sh- subject for anyone. Oh, yeah. for any- oh, for or sure. You say that it's not, I don't fucking believe you. I don't believe you. I think you're faking it. I think that if your high school experience was just extravagant, then a <laughs> little bit of a lie in there in which I kind of respect. If you got to lie to protect yourself, <laughs> do what you got to okay? Because I know that I did that in school. I, I, I did that for sure. I made up things um, really more so about myself. Mm-hmm because I don't know I don't know I knew that people were going to talk anyways so why not play the game I guess right Uh, yeah it wasn't a fun time and I think everybody was trying to find themselves like I said what goes around comes back around and I have hurt people people have hurt me that is the way it is and that is not just a high school thing but I do think that living in a small town for anyone involved not just myself it gets difficult everyone knows everything about you. Nothing is private. Whoever you're dating, everybody knows, or there's a past story. Correct. Being artificial because it really is to an extent, but words, no one gets to say something or do something to someone and then tell them how, how to, how they're supposed to feel about it. And so that at that time, it really did affect me. I of course do my part to get past those same, those things. It's trained me, like I said, that when someone slanders me on the internet, someone posts something about me, tells me to kill myself. I'm like, dude, you're right. Or straight up. You're very right. That's the but best way right. to defuse them, right? You just play into uh, it and be like, sure, okay, right? Not, that's the thing. That's what I'm grateful for, for all of that experience. And even the people I've been a bitch to as well, I know that that has trained them to now not deal with things in the same way. Um, so I would like to say that not all of high school was an awful experience, but there was of course a time where it was difficult for everyone. And that moment did train me for kind of dealing with this time now where I'm getting more well-known on these social media platforms and my music's getting heard more so than it really ever has been. And so when people make disrespectful comments or if I ever were to get canceled or something, it's like, yo, I've been doing this. I've been singing in the dirt and the trees in Washington since I was five years old. I did it before a following and I can do it again. And not that that should be looked at as a threat, but people need to understand that, that creators aren't, you know, we aren't invincible, but also we've been doing this since before we, we started out with two followers, with one follower, with zero followers. And yes, it would be hurtful, but we can do it again. Um, So it's prepared me for if people want to cancel me, if people want to say things, dig up my past, dig up things I've said, anything like that, post about me on the internet, whether it's true or not, that high school has now gave me the way to diffuse it, like you said. Um, So there's benefits to it. People I was fucking disrespectful to they're living their life being like, you know what? Eliza fucking said that to me one time and it really hurt my feelings. And it was the most disrespectful thing that has ever been said to me. But guess what? Now they're my age or close to my age, older or younger than me. And they're probably dealing with their life a lot different. You know, I could be wrong. I would hope I would have never affected anybody in that way. But the sad truth is, is I know that I have and I don't even know it. Right. High school stuff, and it's just the way that it is. But yeah, words, words go a long way. And so that's why I think people should just really try to be careful. Something as simple as the savage remix, you know, racial slurs do go very far. Homophobic slurs do go very far. You know, judgment on people's character, their outfit, anything. 
that's hurtful and it does go very, very, very far. Words matter. And words matter. And in high school, we're sucking that in like a sponge. And so even if these people are intentionally trying to be mean or if whatever it is, maybe that's just who they are at that time because we're learning, trying to figure out who we are in society, mm-hmm. that it just needs to be taking out, you know, your that person's taking things out on you. And we don't have the knowledge in high school to understand when people are making contributions or assumptions on situations they know nothing about. So people just say hurtful shit. Yeah. People do things. And so yes on the grand scheme of things, I can be over everything that happened in high school. When I look at these people, I really don't even hold complete resentment. You know, I don't trust you per se. I will be respectful, but I don't trust you because this still was kind of unresolved to an extent. However, you know, it's, it's all just the stepping stone. Everybody has to take the ladder in this world or else we're going to be stuck in the fucking ground. And if we don't learn to take a step back before what we say, what we do. It's just going to continue to be in that high school cycle. And we never really leave it. In all honesty, we never really leave it small town or not high school or not in the music industry, your industry, Jesus's industry, everyone's industry. There will always be some sort of injustice by someone else's actions or words. And unfortunately, in high school, we suck that in like a sponge and just hope that it doesn't follow with us in our adult years, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it is just people that don't feel good about themselves at all. Mm-hmm. And they put it on other people. Yeah. And if you look at the people that trash other people the most, they're really the most insecure, unhappy themselves. That is very, fortunately, we all go through it, you know, we, that we all go through that thing where, you know, I'll catch myself. Um, Thank God I'm in tune with myself and my emotions enough. I know when I'm doing it. I know when I'm being facetious. I know when I'm being condescending. Um, I'm grateful for that because I can take a step back and realize like, for example, um, on a female to female basis of you know, I see if, if I see a girl that is, has the best outfit of all time, she's like the star of the show. And if on the surface level, it's like, it makes me envious. It's like, you know, oh my God, you know, well, is she, that girl's so cool. I can take a step back and be like, dude, I'm envious of you because of this, this, and this, and yeah. you're wrong. And I think that is great. And your confidence is beaming. And I think if people got more in their own head and more in tune with their emotions, I think it would help, but we do go through that all of us. And that's the most fucked up part is when we are okay with ourselves, even the happiest, most confident people, you know, no matter what, even when like, I'm a really overconfident and narcissistic person and I'm very much aware of it. I know that I am very much aware of it. But even during the times when I'm feeling my fucking lowest, I will catch myself where I will get pissed or if if someone's too nice to me and I'm like in the worst mood, it'll piss me off. Why are you, why why are you in such a good mood right now when I'm trying to order coffee? Like I just woke up and I'm pissed off and then I sit and then I'll laugh literally, or it'll take me a few days and I'll drive up and apologize to whoever it is, but I'll stop and usually laugh and be like, dude you're in a really good mood right now. And to be honest, it's so contagious that it pissed me off because I wanted to be in a bad mood because I'm fucking mad. Right. I really hate myself in this moment. And so I, that basically what I'm saying, yeah, if everyone can fucking learn from me, that'd be really great. So if everyone could walk around this world and be just like me, that would be really great. <laughs> I really do think that when people go through that though, it would help if people could be more in tune with their emotions to know that when they do get in their head like that, or when they do hate themselves due to whatever situation is going on, helps to kind of take this back so that hopefully you can suck your words back in. Or if you already said it, own up to it, own up to it. All that people need to do. If you said something disrespectful, even if it's your past, no matter how ruthless it is, if someone says something to you, I said this, 
it affected you. It was not my intention. And I fucking apologize. I didn't have, I didn't control myself in that moment when saying those words to you because I was too caught up in my head. But I want you to know that I did, in fact, I am aware that it hurt you and I apologize. And that's all people need to do and say. And I try to get better each and every day myself. But all of us have really fucked up emotions, unfortunately, past high school, through now, COVID, everything that goes on in the world. It's just the unfortunate gamble, I think, of where our minds are going to be at today, how we're going to treat people today and how people are going to treat us. And it gets old and that's why I become a hermit and that's why I seclude myself. And that's why COVID has changed things for me personally, because if it's not me who's hating myself and being disrespectful and catching myself and feeling guilty about it, it's me being too happy. And that, you know, it's me being the confident, happy one and someone's doing it to me. Right. What goes around comes back around, just like I said, multiple times. And so in my own main character world, I can have my own injustices and I can play well with me and feel sorry for myself, but everybody has a right to. And if we don't get the time to do that, then we're never going to fucking get past it. So that's just the way it is. High school wasn't fun. No, but it wasn't for anyone else. No. So that's no. I, if you're mean to me, maybe. I was mean to you, maybe. And we're past it. I hope this trauma doesn't continue from here on out. But we live in a goddamn beautiful place. And when I come home to visit, it's important to me. This is a lot of these people's home still. So I'm coming in as the city girl who fled to go live this artificial dream, whether these people are saying it or not. Right. The indirect, I get it. People like the calm, small town. They like the simple life. They don't want some Californian coming in here, disrupting the space. I do get it. And even though that is a stereotype or can be due to people who live in LA, they have a right to feel however they'd like. But it's been nice being here, seeing things in a different way, reflecting on 2020, on my own shit, other people's shit. It's been weird. Like you said, that's not a bad thing, but it is for me because this is new to me. Just how I've been dealing with my emotions, how I've been dealing with the people in my life. I've cut a lot of people off and it hurts. That's weird for me too. But if if they're not, if they shouldn't be in your life, then it's, it's the right thing. Yeah. But I cut people off too for, for a little bit, you know, like I will do it to an extent so I can reflect because if I'm going to lash out, that's not, I I like to wait. If I'm going to cut you off, it's going to be for a little while. And I usually circle back, but this year I just haven't. And so it's just been an adjustment and I've used the word weird so many times and none of it's negative. It's just different, fucking different. This, this year was a wake up call for humanity itself. And I'm very grateful for that because I see things so differently now. And the new year, new me thing, I've never played into that. And it's not like you wake up and you're a new person, but damn fucking straight. 2021 gave me a whole different type of vibe already because I'm setting, I'm manifesting that. It's not the new year, new me bandwagon. It's that I'm manifesting this year better than 2020. And I think everyone should do that. Oh, for sure. And be such you know, like new year, new me. It's so cliche. It's like, I do kind of agree, but it's only cliche if you keep saying it and you don't manifest it. Correct. Okay. If you fucking do it. Right. So just a lot of shit here. No one knows anything. That's the frustrating part. Everyone, all that we knew basically changed in the blink of an eye and <laughs> I still coping with it. All of what we knew before is out the window and we're a whole different dimension now. But I know what you mean. I think after 2020, you know, turning into a new year into 2021, it's like it really is something different. It really is. After yeah. a year like that, I mean, come on. Uh, there was no year like it before and hopefully never again. So, no, it really does feel different going into 21. And I think it, it does feel different. I think that's very genuine. I mean, it would have to be. It was, it was a life-changing year. So, yeah. On a massive level. 
Yeah, I agree. You know, so no, it feels different. It feels like a different universe. It really does. So, Elize, what's coming up? Where can we see you? What's what's going to be going on at Twenty One? Well, I have a new song coming out in two days. It's called Lunatic. It will be everywhere on all platforms. Um, the mix is not going to be perfect. Just really trying to get out my art. When I'm done with the song, I'm just going to release it. Not Try not to spend so much time on the perfection of the mixes and all of that. So kind of this is a demo, I would say. Um, I'm really excited about it. I plan on kind of setting a set schedule for myself to distribute a song. You know, I don't, I don't want to put promises on the table, but I'm really, I would really like to every Tuesday upload a song, upload a song. You know, I'm done with the, you need to do this. Artists need to do this. If you want to upload a song to a playlist, do it two weeks before. Like I get it. I fucking do, but I've been doing this. I've been releasing my own music since I was 15 years old. I have to try it at this point because I'm still not there. I'm still not where I want to be. So at this moment, I'm kind of taking things into my own hands more so than I ever have this year, releasing songs at any time I want without anyone's permission, any sound I want, no matter how shitty the fucking mix, how shitty the production, this is my way of therapy. And it's just the benefit of when others grasp onto it as well. So yeah, this new song in two days is kind of different. Not really a sound that I've kind of messed with before, but I don't, you know, I would say for sure I'm a pop artist, but I don't want to just stick to that. You know that I don't, I'm not trying to mess around with new things. I just want to play music no matter what it is. I don't want to be put in the bubble like every artist says. So this is, this is my year. This is my time. I'm doing it my way. Like I have always done. Way to be. Times a million fucking more. <laughs> That's the only way to be, Eliza. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it, and I really want to hear your new track, Lunatic. I'll be checking that out. And yeah, we got to do a part three and link up again, and I want to see where you're at. But I think you're amazing. I think your art is just off the chain, seriously. You just Thank got you. great songs, great voice, great artistry. And um, it's just, you just got to keep doing it. Give us that music every Tuesday, like you're saying. Give us more because we just can't get enough. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're such a real motherfucker. I, you will always be in my circle, even if you don't want me to be in yours. Always appreciate talking to you. And thank you for having me. Your work, I always try to keep up on. You're doing big things yourself. You keep doing you because the only reason you keep us in the spotlight. That's right. You do. I appreciate so much, Geoff, and I can't wait for a part three. Yeah, I'm right, Eliza. Till next time. All right, till next time, homie. Send me anything you have so I can post and all of that good shit. So you got it. You keep all up right. the hustle. You too. Good to see you.